Have you ever wondered why the person who prioritizes cardio spends hours on the treadmill, does various types of cardio, never has the physique you desire? It's because cardio doesn't have a potent effect on your body composition. So it actually blows my mind that people still rely on cardio as the primary means of changing their body composition. So I am not a believer in doing lots of cardio. I think it's unsustainable. I think it's ineffective for the goal of building a great physique. And really I've tried different cardio forms. And if you look at people who spend hours on the treadmill, do various types of cardio and have that as their pri priority when it comes to exercise, they never have good physiques. They always fall into one of two physique categories, which is always very slim kind of marathon runner physique or skinny fat. And it's because they never put the time into gaining muscle to gaining strength in the gym, which is what's going to actually create that physique that they desire. So when it comes to body composition, what we're really talking about is having a lot of muscle, having a little fat and what the heaviest hitters are and where the priority really needs to be when it comes to changing your body composition is on strength training. It's calories in calories out, hitting the right calorie number for your goals. Whether you want to lose fat, be in a calorie deficit or put on muscle, be in a calorie surplus, it's getting strong in the gym, putting on muscle and it's eating quality calories. So cardio is actually a very inefficient way to change your body composition. And as I said, if you look at most people who prioritize cardio, they never have desire physiques and it's still it really just fucking blows my mind that people think that that's going to be the primary way of changing their body composition I understand a lot of people like to run do various types of cardio they enjoy it but I think a lot of people also have been led to believe that you know going for runs is going to be the best way to change their body composition when it's really not the case but there is one form of cardio that is beneficial and that I do advocate for overall positive body composition and you know for its mental benefits of mood, energy, and overall well-being. And what this is, is walking. So when you actually look at why most people do cardio, it's in order to burn calories. But most forms of cardio, like going for intense runs, doing intense hit training or whatnot, it's actually an extremely inefficient way of burning calories. The reason being is because if you go for an hour run and you burn 500 calories, more likely than not, you're gonna come back and you're gonna be hungry. You're gonna have worked up an appetite. And if the goal is fat loss, it's all about being in a calorie deficit at the end of the day. And if running and intense cardio is gonna work up an appetite and you're gonna come back and eat the calories that you burned, then you completely just wasted that hour of your life that you're never going to get back. Obviously, you're gonna have gotten some cardiovascular benefits from the running, but when the goal is body composition, it's actually an extremely inefficient way of doing things. And you're better off just controlling that calorie intake through your diet. So the reason why walking is so effective in terms of fat loss, because we're going to talk about both how it affects muscle building and fat loss. When it comes to fat loss, as I said, it's about hitting that calorie deficit. And the best, the easiest way to lose fat in an ideal world is for you to just not be hungry so that you can consistently put yourself in that calorie deficit and burn that fat. If you're not hungry, then you're gonna win, you're gonna lose fat, it's gonna be easy. The biggest problem people, people face when it comes to dieting is the hunger that comes from being in a calorie deficit, which is normal. But the worst thing that you can do is go for a run, do intense cardio, work up an appetite, and end up eating not just the calories you burned back, but eating more than that and going on a binge because you worked up such an appetite. So when it comes to cutting and losing fat, you wanna keep your appetite as low as possible. And that's why walking is super effective because walking doesn't have an extreme effect on your appetite. So you could easily go for an hour, two hour walk, come back and your, your, your appetite's actually going to be neutral. It's not really going to be affected at all. That makes it a very potent um, activity when it comes to fat loss because not only are you burning calories, but you're not working up an appetite to want to eat those calories back. So it's a very, very efficient way to burn calories and, and improve your body composition during a cut. And when we look at muscle building, really, when it comes to building muscle, you want to save as much recovery. And this goes for this goes for fat loss as well, because what it comes down to when it comes to having a good body composition, especially when you're cutting, is keeping as much muscle as possible and getting rid of the fat. And when you're doing extreme forms of cardio and you're already in an energy deficit and you you're, you don't have enough energy to recover as it is, literally from doing nothing. Um, going going and doing intense cardio is just going to keep putting a dent in that recovery and it's going to take away from the efforts you could be putting into the gym and maintaining your strength, maintaining your muscle mass. And the same thing actually goes with bulking. So when the goal is, is, is muscle mass, it's strength keeping your muscle on a cut or building muscle, you wanna save as much recovery as you can for the weights, for getting strong. Because our body's recovery abilities are limited and you need to save as much as you can, save as much energy reserves for getting strong in the gym, for maintaining your strength in the gym. And that's what's really going to create the biggest effect when it comes to body composition. I really, really recommend on top of the two to three lifting sessions per week, everyone gets 
10 to 15,000 steps per day. And the way this is actually going to even help with, with muscle building, because we know how it's going to help with fat loss. It's going to have, walking is gonna have no effect on appetite and it's going to increase your calorie deficit and help you burn fat quicker. However, when it comes to muscle building, there's actually a very underlying benefit to it. And the reason is, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're bulking, you're in gain mode, you're, you're, you're consuming excess calories. And what walking can do is it can help prevent gaining unnecessary body fat, but without putting a dent in your recovery. So instead of, instead of reducing the calories in order to, to prevent fat gain, you can just eat quite a bit more, but still go and just get the steps in, go get the, go get the walking in. And it's going to have no effect on your recovery ability. And it's going to, it's going to reduce the amount of unnecessary fat that you gain. So it's actually a very powerful tool for bulking as well, because you don't want to just be, um, you know, a piece of shit laying around like a potato when you're bulking, just because the goal is to gain muscle. You still want to go out. You still want to get exercise on the days that you're not training and lifting weights. And, you know, there's actually another underlying benefit to walking. It's that it's, it's actually positive for your recovery. So you don't want to actually just lay around in your recovery days. I do recommend, I think there's very much something to be said for taking one full day of doing fuck all, doing nothing, like literally just trying to rest as much as possible. Like take a Sunday, for example. But I think on every other day, it is positive to get out and get the blood flowing in your body. So going for walks is actually going to improve your recovery ability. It's going to help with soreness. It's going to get the blood flowing in the body. And it's just going to be a great way to get in some extra exercise on the days when you don't train because if you're following the polarity fitness philosophy when it comes to strength training you're only going to be lifting two to three days per week so you don't want to just be a sack of shit for the for the rest of the days you want to you want to get out get exercise and really where i love walking the most like forget about body composition is its mental benefits so you know actually human beings there's a recent harvard study that came out indicating that our hunter gatherer ancestors men walked 10 miles per day which is about 22,000 steps per day our anthropology, our bodies were meant to be active. We were meant to walk. Our, our bodies were literally built to walk long distances. So walking is fantastic for the human body. It's what we were evolved to be able to do. So you should absolutely prioritize walking. And literally the best way to see your health markers improve if you do blood work and you see, the easiest way to see that, those, that, that blood work improve is two to three so like heavy lifts per week combined with lots of walking. That's literally the best way to improve your health. So with the polarity fitness philosophy, it's not only incredible for building and build, building a great physique, losing fat, gaining muscle, but you're going to be improving your health and your health markers in all regions. So really walking is just so great for your, for the mental side of things. If you go out, especially in nature, if you have the ability to walk in nature, then you are very fucking lucky. You should absolutely take advantage of that. So the, the way I like to do it is 10 to 15,000 steps per day. Sometimes I put in an audio book, I'll put in a podcast and I'll just go walk in nature. Sometimes I'll just completely de-plug and kind of treat it almost as if like it's a meditative practice. Just reflect as I walk through the woods in, in complete quiet in a complete quiet environment and that's a very effective way to go about it as well. So it's not just positive for your for your for your body composition. It's amazing for your mood, your energy, your overall well-being. So your quality of life will drastically improve in all areas from getting out, getting the walking in. So I absolutely 100% advocate getting out, getting 10 to 15,000 steps per day on top of the lifting that you're doing. So that's going to be the best way to improve your health, improve your body composition. And that's the cardio you want to do. You don't want to worry about doing intense cardio, intense hit, intense running on the treadmill. It's absolute bullshit. It's ineffective and it's unsustainable. Like who the fuck wants to run on a treadmill? It's boring shit. So prioritize the walking, prioritize the lifting and you will be fucking set. Another really positive way to go about getting in your cardio is if you can do it through a sport you love or an activity you love. So that's a really great way to do it as well because you're not even going to be thinking about the fact that it's helping your body composition. It's good for your health. You're just doing it because you like it and you can engage with friends and whatnot and it can be a positive thing so i like to do i like to i like to box once or twice per week for 45 minutes so that's another way i like to um you know that's another way i like to get in a bit of cardio on top of or instead of instead of walking for certain days but on the days where on the days where i'm not lifting even on the days where i'm lifting 10 to 15 thousand steps per day and then just one to two boxing sessions per week and that's the way you want to go about doing it so that's really it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this, drop a like, subscribe, of course. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Make sure to pick up my free natural muscle building checklist to ensure that you're hitting on the 13 fundamental steps to building your physique as a natural. And we'll talk soon.